innovative presentation on a very innovative area of HR which he has suggested it should be covered and I believe looking at the millennials and now the Generation Z, this is the way forward and not only in terms of what they like or dislike but also in terms of the accuracy with which we want to predict that who are the, who are the right resources to populate our talent pipeline. Thank you very much once again and we move to the second interactive talk of the afternoon and this talk is going to be uh, presented to us by Mr. Ron Thomas. The subject is the future of work and Mr. Thomas, it's, a, it's very important for me to share a bit of uh, introduction, is the managing director of a strategy focus group on international consulting firm based in Dubai and Singapore. And he's also a visiting executive faculty member at the Global Human Resources Leadership Institute at Harvard University of Business in Washington and a certified leadership architect by Conferi as well. I was going through his profile uh, this morning and last evening as well. And uh, Mr. Thomas has almost uh, collected all possible accolades which are, which are there on the global platform when it comes to HR. He has also been contributing author to numerous books has been featured, his work has been featured in Wall Street Journal, INC Magazine, Workforce Management, etc. So please join me in welcoming Mr. Ron Thomas. Thank you. you read all of it. <laughs> uh, good afternoon. Um, I'm always kind of embarrassed when the bio is read. Um, can I live up to that? Um, thank you for coming back after lunch. Um, this morning was really transformative. Transformative from a mindset perspective, transformative from the work we're going to have to do moving forward. You know, a lot of the discussions were around, my topic has been covered, uh, future of leadership. But that's kind of a common thread that runs through all of this because there's leadership and the other part of that equation is people. How are we gonna connect those two? because that's going to be the challenge. There's an interesting book now that's called Talent Wins. If you get a chance, pick it up and read it. Because the dynamic ties into what we're talking about, facing the disruption and VUCA environment and all these kinds of things, the differentiator is going to be people or talent. So I'm going to take kind of a different approach. How many of you in the room are C-suite? top-level executives within companies, non-HR. Okay, cool. How many of you are HR? Okay, so this is gonna be a matchmaking session because you two have to talk to each other. Your HR people have the expertise, the talent expertise. So if you're the strategic expertise, how do you marry those two together? Now, in HR parlance, that's talked about a seat at the table, which I hate that phrase. But how do you understand what's happening in the big room? Are you a part of the month end closing cycle? Are you sitting in on meetings talking future state? Because if your talent expert is not in that room, there's going to be a disconnect. We can have all the presentations and all these kinds of things, but in the end, it's going to come back to taking that strategic plan, filtering that out through the organization, through some strategic role, and driving that forward. That's huge. I tend to tell people if I'm on a flight, and they'll, you know, people will always ask, what do you do? I never say human resources. I never say, oh, I just work in human resources. I will say, I'm an organizational architect. And right away, I see, I see the eyes rolling because they're trying to understand what is that? What is an arch organizational architect? So when they ask that question, I said, you have a department of organizational architects. No, I'm pretty sure. I don't have a department. I know all the job titles in my firm because normally these are senior leaders. I said, your HR department are your organizational architects. They take your strategy and they align a workforce around that through the implications of VUCA and all of the things that we've talked about this morning. That is the role of the modern version of human resources 
future state. Being able to take that strategic initiative and, and advance it forward. So sometimes when I'm in an HR-only audience, I will ask you, how many of you can write down one, two, or three of your organization's strategic initiatives, say, for 2020? I get a few hands will go up, and I'll see the non-competent hands do one of these real quick. What that means is I kind of know it, but I don't really know it. So if I'm in front of a C-suite audience, how many of you see your HR department or that HR head as important as your CFO? Or important as your CMO? And that's what I'm looking for, is that connection between the two. Because moving forward in this future of work and all the dynamics that was discussed today, we have to make that work. And the other part to that equation is the external partnership that we build outside. Another question I will ask sometimes is, how many of you follow your industry newsletter? This is, this is HR related. How many of you follow your industry newsletter? How many of you know the major disruptors that's facing your industry? I get the same few hands or halfway. Halfway means I, I may know it and then, and then again I may not know it. Don't ask me any questions. And this is what we're talking about. Every survey that's done on HR leadership connecting to the C-suite, number one challenge, and this is across Con Ferry, Deloitte, all of them will come back to the same thing, is business acumen. Understanding the business you're in. If you're in HR, you need to become a student of your industry. You need to become a student of every disruptive trend that comes through, reading everything there is to read about it. Because if you're going to be that architect that connects those two, that's your role. They're not going to come back and give it to finance or accounting or marketing and say, come up with a workforce plan that aligns around this strategic initiative. By 2020, we want to increase this by X amount. We've had a lot of talk today about upskilling, reskilling, whichever descriptive you use. Who's going to run that? L&D learning and development for the non-HR related people, is one of the most important roles moving forward because skills, capabilities are going to have to be really, really researched to understand where is all of this headed in five years. So we t this morning some of the discussions was around 20 years out, 25 years out. I did some work for Dubai Airport and we had a discussion around strategic outlook and they were into 2030. This was two years ago. They've maxed out the space in Dubai, can't expand anymore, and they decided to build another airport on the other side of town. Then the oil revenue dropped, and they put all that on hold. So how do we navigate, how do we understand that? So this is what I'm going to talk about as it relates to the future of work. Don't ever believe I have a crystal ball in the back that I've looked into to come up with this. But this comes from working all over the world. I was in Europe last week. I was in Lagos, Nigeria a couple of weeks before that. I leave tomorrow to go to Singapore. So this is based on a more global outlook for the challenges of human resources as well as the challenges for you as leaders. Because you've got to become a little more collaborative. If that meet, major meeting that you're having every month or whenever you're having that of your senior team, if your HR personnel is not sitting in that meeting, you're doing your organizational disservice. I say that HR is the most important department within the organization because everything we've talked about this morning was around people, talented people, skill sets needed to drive that forward. That's why it's important. Anybody wants to debate that? After I'm off the stage, we can go at it. More than glad to. So here's a, here's a quote I'd like to use, uh, misspelling too. It was the best of times and it was the worst of times. And as the discussion was talking, was, was going, all of the, the dis discussions this morning, some of us would see that through a different lens. Some of, some of us would see it as we have so much work to do. I can't wait to get involved in this. Whereas some of us would see it as the worst of times. 
A gentleman told me last week in Singapore, a couple of weeks in Singapore, said that he was out last night because their company had a retirement dinner for uh, long-term employees. And just by chance, I said, well, how many years did they serve? He said, 35 years. And I thought I, I thought I heard the wrong thing. I said, excuse me again? He said, 35 years. I said, well, you know, as year in, as years continue, you're going to need a smaller room because the 35-year employee is not going to be around. The people that's in your workforce now, are not, they're not going to be there for 35 years. How do you harness that over that life cycle of whatever it may be? What's the average tenure in your organization? What's the average age in your organization? All those are DNAs of a workforce that we, in human resources, the organizational architect has to know. Because all of those, not all of those, but a lot of those dynamics will come into play as we solution challenges within the organization. So we've talked about automation, education, the future of work. So much rich discussion. Best of times. How many of you see, uh, based on what you've heard this morning, as the best of times for us in this profession, the HR people, best of times? Okay, a few hands going up. How many of you see it as the worst of times? Okay, you don't have to hold your hand up and, and, and identify yourself. But you know in your mindset you're thinking, oh my gosh, for based on all of this, am I able to handle my side of this? It's a heavy lifting. But it means that we have to become a student of our organization, student of our industry, student of the so-called future state of the business we're in. future of the enterprise demands a new future of people. Every presentation kind of talked through this. How is it going to change the enterprise, the workforce? How can your organization take the lead and build sustained performance? As James talked about in, his first, uh, in the first presentation this morning, how do you sustain that over a period of time? Talent is going to be the de uh, deciding factor in doing that. It demands new outcomes, and HR has to play a critical role in that plan. I'm a firm believer of that. So here's the kind of three that I look at what we do and how are we going to break into this and enable our organization to build sustained performance, having the right talent. We talked this morning. Your presentation was great, and I love what you said about succession planning outdated concept. Performance management, outdated concept. It's going to have to be rethought in this, in, in this disruptive environment. Future of the workplace, future of the enterprise and the industry we're in, and the future of how work gets done. Uh, if you follow, How many of you, this is another question I tend to ask from time to time. This is from HR Focus moving to organizational architect. How many of you read daily or maybe weekly the business section of your newspaper. Okay, cool. Because you have to. So when you think about the future of how work gets done, who knows what Microsoft announced two days ago? Microsoft had a major announcement. Four-day work week. Six months ago, there was a company in New Zealand. Four-day work week. 30-minute meetings. 30-minute meetings. Get to the point. Amazon says no PowerPoint. Forget about this. Give us a descriptive, give us a case study, and we'll discuss it. Changing the way it's done. And everything is going to have to be revisited. So the other key component that came through this morning, and I said, well, I know I'm on the wrong track. I was in Philippines last two weeks ago. Every country, every week I'm in a different country, so... Sometimes I get, uh, get, get it confused. We, d we, we work with uh, Aboitis uh, Energy, it used to be electric, Aboitis Energy. And we were developing the HR team on strategic workforce planning. What is talent going to look like three to five years out? Are we understanding the trends? What key roles are, are going to be needed uh, to make sure we sustain performance? So we worked on scenario planning. 
what if? Is it an exact science? No, nah, that's not an exact science with that. It's just, it's just trying to figure out what if we were to do this, what would happen? If we were to do that, what would happen? And what would be the talent implications? So if you think through, what's the business challenge? What's the workforce implication? What is the audience that's going to be impacted? Then you can begin your work. So I do a lot of work also with banks in uh, Singapore. And retail banking is going through a huge transformation, huge transformation. How many of you have gone into a physical branch over the past month? A physical bank branch. Okay. How many of you have done online or everything's online? So if I'm in the banking business, why do I need a branch? Scenario planning means that what happens when we become a branchless company? Like a company in Jordan, their strategic goal was by 2025 to start closing branches down. And they were building it, their entire infrastructure around mobile banking. Audience impacted tellers, customer service branch managers. What are we going to transition to? What's the skill set this current state to future state? Amazon started experimenting with robots inside of their factories. Alibaba, 100% robotics uh, logistics center. Amazon is now looking into to transitioning the workforce. But there's 100,000 workers in a job that's called Pickers. That's the job title. How do you transition that? So they just announced, who knows what Amazon announced maybe a month ago. They put aside or set aside $700 million to reskill their workforce to reskill their workforce. So I say also, what are the governments doing? What's the government? If you're a, a, a governmental leader, what are you thinking about concerning the impacts of the industries in your country? Because you should be driving that. And I'll give you an example of a case study I worked on. I was the vice president of human resources for Martha Stewart in New York for about eight years. I almost said she used to be a celebrity. She killed me if she heard me say that. She still thinks she's a celebrity, but a good friend. And we were going through a major transformation because remember TVs were as big as this and it took three people to pick them up? Well, when TV went from analog to digital, our camera people had to be retrained and recertified on digital cameras. We heard this on a conference call, earnings call, and that's what gave us the impetus to start working through from the human resource solution provider. Learning and development, looked at certification. How long is that going to take? How much is that going to cost? We went to our Ministry of Labor, went to the TV division to say, here's what we're facing. Has the government done any research on digital camera people, digitization? Oh, yes, we've done all that. Here's our data behind it. Also, we have grant money available to, for you to upskill the workforce. We filled everything out. We received a grant for $250,000. Partnerships through the government. We also were challenged as it related to, because one of our business, businesses was based on magazines. And now, I can get a magazine online, and it's not print. The printing sector is dying. How do we transition that? The starting point, once we figured this out, was the work through the Ministry of Labor, because the, New York City was kind of the publishing and TV capital of the world, and they had done research on all of this. So we knew what new skills that were going to be needed as a result of that. So industry policymaker roadmaps, is that's the solution that we took to, to solve that by getting those people involved. We also went out to high schools. In New York City, if, you go, if your child is in school, they can kind of specialize. They can specialize in art. They can specialize in IT. They can even specialize in aeronautics. They've got a high school at LaGuardia Airport. Not college degree, but again, getting young people involved from an earlier age because the school systems that we were talking about, that's going to have to be revisited also. And all of this gave me kind of a way to look at problems or challenges going forward, that we're going to have to rethink this, collaborate more, 
towards a reskilling revolution and industry level action. So we'll kind of talk through those. Scenario planning, this is what we did. So I did a session in Lagos, Nigeria th back in August and we were having a workshop on strategic workforce planning. The conference room was next to the CEO's office who apparently was listening in on the conversation. And he saw me at break and he said, what, what's this going on here? And I said, strategic workforce planning, you know, under the auspices of your HR department. He said, because it didn't sound like HR. You know, you were talking strategy, future state, skill set, all these kinds of things. He said, you know, my senior team needs to understand strategic workforce planning. Once this session is over, let's, let's have a, let, 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 I want to bring you back and do a, maybe a one day session with just, just my senior team. Because there's a lot of new areas we're going into and we're going to need to understand it from the talent perspective and how do you figure out critical roles, what criteria, what rigor is going to be used and all of that. Again, tying the two together. And this is what we're trying to look at. So this reskilling. So we talked about Amazon, how they are looking to reskill their workforce. So there was a Last year, I think it was last year, Google uh, introduced Google Duplex. Who's heard, heard of Google Duplex? Okay. If you search Google Duplex on YouTube, you'll see the most amazing disruptor of customer service. Because the Google Duplex will take all of the machine learning AI, put it all together so we, it, it can make a call and you cannot differentiate between a human. And as I watched that, what I thought about was if I'm in the customer service area, all of these jobs are going to change. Philippines is the largest uh, geographical region for customer service. All that's going to change. Because when I call a number, someone asks me what is your problem or issue or whatever, and they divert that call. That could be the first line. So what if AI technology took care of that first line, and then it escalated to wherever else it was going. It was absolutely amazing because if you close your eyes and listen to the conversation and the presentation, you could not connect it to that being a computer that that person was talking to. So this reskilling, futuring, I'm going to throw that back into our space from human resources. You are no different, we're no different than the person that works in Amazon is picking orders every day, which is called a picker. Because those skills that are needed now for that type of logistics center won't be needed in 10 years. I read an article the other day that, eight, that human resources 10 years from now will look totally different. So we're in this reskilling re equation as much as every other uh, department. We are in that same vortex. But we can't wait for the organization to say, I want you to become a strategic business partner. I want you to start solving some of these issues. If you're in the whirlwind, you need to start preparing for it now. And all that means is something as simple as reading the newspaper every day, or news, wherever you get your news from. Because I mentioned that the other day, somebody, somebody said, Ron, nobody reads the newspaper anymore. I said, I think you, I think you know what I mean. We're going to have to look at situations in the business sector if that would happen in your organization, what would you do about it? How would you begin to solution that? That's a good way to stay on point or stay sharp. What is your next level of development? Is it more analytically dr driven? If you look at the SHRM competency model, 2018, there's nine slices of areas of expertise for this so-called future state. Only one is HR technical skills. You've got analytics, you've got consultation, you've got client management, you've got every critical evaluation. I saw it on one of the slides. Only one is the HR expertise. So if you have the HR expertise that you understand the processes, you need to begin thinking now, what is next? Because you're going to have to be reskilled, the same as everyone else is going to have to be reskilled. And you senior leaders, you're going to have to be reskilled because the leadership skills are changing somewhat. I just kind of politely say that. 
Leadership skills are changing because the workforce, the new dynamics of the workforce is changing. You can't lead and manage the way that you did years ago. So we're all into this. So we talked about the industry, the roadmaps. How many of you have ever had a discussion or spent some time at your Ministry of Labor? Okay. So if I come back in six months, I ask that question. I want some, uh, someone to proudly say, yes. I did, and I researched my industry. How many of you are members or receive a, a monthly, whatever it is, from your industry, I'm going to say newsletter, that could come in online. How many of you follow your industry? This is, this is what we're talking about. You know, the automobile industry has the most disruptors than any other industry today. It was like seven, based on this article that was written uh, a while back. Seven disruptors. Not only just transitioning from petrol to electric, but so many other disruptors. The business model is changing. Do we need as many dealers? Why couldn't you buy online? Everything is changing. The industry is already doing research on all of those. So if I'm in the car business, I need to understand each one of those disruptors, and I need to understand it from the filter of talent within my organization. This new role of human resources is going to come back to being an expert in the industry as well as understand the dynamics of your workforce as it plays into that. Because the talent situation is going to be the key. That's going to drive everything as we move forward. So business strategy aligned with people strategy. And there's our organization in the center. Has to be connected. And if you're having these how many of any, anyone here uh, pub, publicly traded company? Okay, publicly traded company. Okay. Um, how many of you HR people sit in your end of month closings, meetings, or whatever you call it in your organization? Because that's, gonna ha that's an absolute imperative for human resources. You can't expect to always be reactive. Someone coming out of the big meeting and says, oh, by the way, here's what I need you to look at. Well, we solved that situation from the digital transformation of camera people. We solved that because all the HR department had to sit in on the earnings call, which was every three months. We had to sit on our earnings call to figure out what are the challenges the organization is facing because all of that will be discussed and it's unfiltered. This is going to be the new model. And as you see, you're the architect because you're going to take the business strategy and you're going to build the people strategy around that. So if this was a marketing, uh, if we had marketing people in here, you'd have marketing strategy there. Now if you had finance people, you'd have a finance strategy. Everybody has a role in that. And lots of times HR is kind of given the short shift that we're not as present as possible to try and understand it. But we must understand the enterprise and moving it forward. Strategic workforce planning. The dynamics of a workforce look the same way as customer experience. I was in Croatia two weeks ago, and the, the, the woman that spoke before me was from some major company, and their engagement was built on the same premises that the customer experience was being measured. Think of that. Who's more important in the organization? Customer or the, your employees? Now this is a lot of, I saw a slide up earlier. Um, Richard Branson possibly says the same thing, but a friend of mine is the CEO for a major hospital in, in Dubai, American hospital, and he says, his leadership mantra to all of his people is that take care of the people who take care of the patients. If we take care of the people, the customer will be taken care of. And that's the leadership principle that he instills in all of his leaders. And then we come down to forecasting future skills, capabilities, and continuous learning. Continuous learning for you. What is going to be next? The skill set you have today five years, ten years out, is going to be disrupted. And you have to figure out what's next. Do I want to veer more towards analytics? Do I want to understand the consulting cycle, how that works? 
How do I bring solution into an organization? The other thing I, I want to say is for HR people or organizational architect people, what is the organizational impact of each initiative that you're running? Is there an impact that you're having on the organization? Because if that's the principle or if that's the threshold, that's where it need, needs to be. We'll still do process and procedures, but a lot of that focus moving forward is going to have to be on organizational impact and how are we going to move that forward. So future workforce, what is it going to look like? One of the, the presentations earlier this morning talked about the social enterprise values. What does it mean to work for your company? James talked about that overriding arc to say, here's who we are, because that means something today. Google it was in a, a big kind of a conundrum the other, some time ago, because they had taken a contract from the Department of Immigration for the US, and there's a lot of political noise around that. And the employees basically said, we're not going to do it. We don't want to be a part of that as a result. So all of that changed. So extend the enterprise with a partnership system. So I talked about your Ministry of Labor as a resource. They've got information there that you possibly could use. So this reimagining work, how is that going to look? There is no one size fit all. If you were to leave your company, go to another company, you're going to have to possibly approach it differently because we're all caught up in different ways of doing that. And I talked about earlier, HR leave us to business outcomes and just trying to connect the dots. Four key areas, mindset, we talked about. Focus, what's the people focus? Through what lens are we looking? And how do we enable the organization to become a sustained performer in that space? Trace behaviors in the, new, in the digital age are changing drastically, not only for HR people, but leaders as well, and someone cover that. The way we design jobs, organize work, plan for future growth, the best of times, the best of times. And that's the way you have to think through that mindset capability. All of these companies here are listed. No change, future state. Same as, in other words, they were Kodak. And all of these were big companies within the U.S. Forever 21 just went bankrupt here some time ago. This is what's happening today. Was it talent related? Possibly. Vision, uh, strategic workforce planning, what does the future look like? All of these made bad bets. So here's kind of the transition in a few. Auto banking, retail banking to cloud, retail to e-commerce, shopping versus online, autos to five disruptions. If you're in any one of these, you have to be thinking about future state. The jobs of HR, based on all the presentations we've had today, are pretty much done. We have to think of it a lot differently in moving forward. So focus, uh, workforce satisfaction, employee engagement, all of those are key, key components. It's understanding the dynamics of the workforce. And it's trying to create what we would call a simply irresistible organization. It provides meaningful work, great management or leadership, fun, flexible. Maybe I can work from home. I have a lot more flexibility. Growth opportunities, cultivate open communication with leaders. Um, I'm just going to kind of skip through this. All of this I've been talking about here, advanced technologies. And bringing it all together is here. We have a lot of work cut out for us. I'll go back to the quote, best of times, worst of times. If you're thinking worst of times, maybe you need to figure out what's next on the career ladder because all of this drivers that have been talked about this morning as well as this afternoon is going to require a different level of skill and from the HR space, we're going to have to drive that from the enterprise to the workforce to how work gets done and all of that's research-based or evidence-based in providing an approach. Thank you very much for that. I'm on time? Okay. I will be around the rest of the... Yeah.